Okay, I wish I could say I had good news. I was uh, really excited for this project when I first started, but I think I got to put this to bed and uh, write it off as, a, as an experiment and a learning opportunity. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, run through this uh, one last time and then move on to other things. Uh, yesterday I got uh, my replacement fuse in uh, after blowing uh, the other fuse on, an, on another mishap. Uh, I opened this guy up out of curiosity. That's what it looks like on the inside. There's, um, of course, it's filled with sand. Uh, what this is is they they solder in these uh, little uh, ribbon bar things, and then there's like a, a melting point in there. And then the arc is extinguished by the sand. It's kind of like a silica uh, white powder uh, that's in there. And the same thing, I'm sure, is inside there. And um, there's plugs there as well on both of these. Is probably how they, they fill the sand in there. Um, and so I was a little disappointed when I ordered this. I thought it was getting a good deal. I thought it'd be the same as this. It is 400 amps, but there's a kind of a big size difference. And I think this one is more sensitive to getting blown because it blew right away. This uh, endured quite a few failures first uh, before blowing, and but this one, one shot, and then, then it's over. So I guess technically it's safer, but it's a little bit more annoying because I only bought one. So I don't want to keep throwing money into this if it's just going to keep blowing up. Uh, and I'm just, yeah, whatever. So, but I know there's a lot of people out there who still want to give us a shot. I'm not dissing this. I'm not disrespecting this. I mean, uh, it might be viable if you really ha have the know-how and the technical abilities. I do believe in my own technical abilities to understand this, but I'm going to go by some of the uh, disadvantages that I found. Today, for example, it was the last straw because I didn't do anything wrong. It just blew up, uh, literally. Uh, you can see there's a little crack right there. I flicked the on switch, and then a big pop sound, I saw a flash, and that's it. I turned, I killed the power, that thing is done. Uh, and I, I don't think I did anything wrong, because um, this thing, the last time I powered this thing up, was right here on this bench, with a smaller transformer, and it ran fine. Um, so, uh, I can't explain it, I'm just done with it. Um, so, my all my parts are now for sale, I'm, I'm selling my uh, 7.5 KVA transformer, it's on eBay, Amazon, and Kijiji. Uh, and I will be, if anyone's interested, this inductor, I don't think I can sell it on by standard meads because it's a custom product. 47 microhenries, it can do up to uh, 280 amps AC RMS. If you're interested, give uh, leave a comment uh, below or send me a message somehow. Uh, I'll hook you up. We'll just, just make an offer, whatever. Um, and um, so, yeah, so let's just talk about this a little bit more. Um, what would I recommend if I were going to be building one of these or testing one of these further? And so let's just talk about first the MOSFETs. Uh, the first thing you want to look at when you're selecting your MOSFETs is you want something with a very low um, on resistance or RDS on. The lower the better. Um, and usually you can get very low values if you get a low voltage rating. Uh, the lower the voltage rating uh, that these things uh, can do, the higher the current. So, but if you're going doing higher voltage applications, like 60 volts or even 100 volts, then you're going to sacrifice uh, your current your current ratings. Um, but uh, so that's where if you're going to go to high voltages like that, you might want to consider something like IGBTs. Uh, MOSFETs aren't, aren't really for that, but they work well in this kind of application. Lower voltage, you can get really low um, RDS on values. Uh, and they got to match. Um, that's one of the things that maybe went wrong with this, but uh, there was no load, so I, I don't consider that an excuse. Also, it ran on the bench. I have some uh, mixed MOSFETs in here. These are HY4008s. That's what it came with. After I blew it up once, I just replaced it with what I had, which were some of the same, but some of them are um, they're not even on this side. They're on the other side that didn't blow up. 3810. The 3810 and the 4008, they're exactly the same uh, for power rating, but one has a slightly higher uh, internal resistance uh, and a, a higher voltage. The 3810s can do higher voltage, the 4008s can't. Now, this other thing is kind of buyer beware a little bit. I don't know what it means if anyone is in supply chain. These components, you can't buy in regular means. Like I'm talking about DigiKey or Newark. Uh, or Element 14, um, these mainstream Western supply chain uh, dealers, they just don't list it. They don't have it. You can't get the data sheet. They don't have anything. These are, this is like exclusive Chinese only. 
And I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means they're less reliable, but I do know they are cheaper. You get them directly from AliExpress. They're a lot cheaper than the equivalent MOSFET off from DigiKey. DigiKey is kind of expensive anyway, just because they have a lot of inventory, a lot of selection ready to go in small quantities. Um, this thing here as well, again, it's not really intended for this application. This is a demo board originally. Um, and so what they've done in these circuits is that they've added... So this has one current feedback, IFB is the pin one. It can only measure one point, and it does whatever it wants with that uh, feedback mechanism. And that's just basically shut it off if, it's, if that voltage reaches 0.5 volts. 0.5 volts, if, if you're going across a shunt, that's a, with high currents, that's an enormous number, right? So if I have 100 amps going through that, and 0.5 volts are, uh, are dropping across my shunt to measure how much, how much current it is, that is a considerable power loss. That's um, 50 watts. Let's think of it like a 50 watt light bulb glowing red hot on your inverter. So that's why um, you can't really rely on any current readings that this thing is made for. You have to use an op amp to amplify a very so much smaller uh, voltage and, and bring that up to what that can read. But that's the other thing. This is, I mentioned that in the last video. This inductor uh, and this switching power supply is right next to that very high impedance input. And that's what caused this thing to blow up the first time, uh, is that current feedback. It was just oscillating like crazy and just screwed the whole thing up. Now, you'll see this resistor on a, a lot of these things. This is another one they've added. It gets put on the, the top side of C24. And that's basically um, continuous current. So what they've done is this is short circuit current, so it's very very fast response time for any kind of spikes in current, and it'll and the, this controller will shut shut it uh, down. But if you want to filter those out and have a slower response time, that's where they added a second op amp here and a capacitor. So your continuous current will be set by this one, uh, and that goes yeah, and this is just a 10k resistor in there, and it goes you can see C24, it's on the top side of that, um, and. So that works pretty well for monitoring that. So then these two other ones here are the low voltage cutoff and the high voltage cutoff. And that's why I wanted this inverter to work in the first place because lithium ion batteries are different from lead acid batteries for voltage range. And you can dial that in with this. Other invert It's very hard to find an inverter on the market that will work with lithium ion batteries or just simply adjustable, like, free, free, like freely programmable and isn't like the, the cost of a car, like, you know, um, but whatever, this is a learning experience, a learning opportunity. I learned quite a bit from this, no regrets. If I can manage to sell that transformer, I'm sure it'll cover for the costs of all this stuff uh, because the, the original purchase price for that transformer was so ridiculously low. And I wouldn't even have done this project if that transformer wasn't so cheap to begin with because it's just not worth it. Um, so that's important if you're going to be uh, considering this kind of thing. The other thing is the feedback mechanism, the voltage feedback. Um, there is an issue, a design issue with this, a major flaw, that if your uh, feedback is disconnected for any reason, yes, it will shut down, but not before going to the maximum trying to give itself some feedback. So that means if you have appliances or anything connected to your inverter, and for some whatever reason, say you have a loose pin or a, the, the, it gets pulled out, this thing will go to its maximum, and that may exceed what your devices can handle, though it might blow up, right? And then after a few seconds of running at maximum, it then it shuts it down and gives a, an error code saying there's no feedback. That's a kind of a fatal flaw in my opinion. I was going to modify this and add a redundant feedback circuit. You get the best feedback when you get feeding back the 240 volts or 220 volts on your um, high side of your transformer back again through an isolation transformer, of course. Bring it down to 12 volts and then rectify it. There's a, the rectifier and then uh, just a voltage divider to bring it down to something like I think it looks like 0.3 volts or something like that. You can do the same thing with the, the AC output here. You can just have internal feedback and just limit this to whatever voltage your input of your transformer is. Now, uh, because that's the advantage of having your feedback on the output of your transformer, is any sag that happens in your transformer, this will compensate for that very quickly. Uh, but again, for the risk of completely blowing everything up if, if, it, if it loses any feedback. So you can have both with um, 
with the diode, just have this one set a little bit lower. That so if this gets disconnected, it'll fall back um, and just output a very low voltage. And you'll if you get sag on your line, you're like, oh, there's something wrong with the feedback circuit. Uh, and that's about it. Now, I, I had uh, just my own observations for the sine wave that this thing outputs. Uh, it's mostly pretty good. Um, the, because I was low, operating at a lower than nominal voltage range, you get little tiny ripples, and I think that's what the capacitors are doing. Like, you're the, um, it, you need bigger capacitors if you want to smooth that out a bit more, but I think it was acceptable. Uh, but even those little ripples, they'd be way worse. And I've actually blown some stuff up because I didn't have the right inductor and I didn't have the capacitors that's these guys down here they ship it with this capacitor but I bought this capacitor and I bought these ones as well because I, I'm on a split phase system I wanted something on the 120 volt and something both on the 240 volt and this one's just kind of like redundant and this kind of does make noise like these are doing something this, this minuscule amounts of current flowing through these but it's really smoothing it out these these really help these are purpose built for 240 volt lines and if you're doing something at a different voltage, like 220 or 200, you got to, you have to look it up accordingly. Uh, uh, so that's uh, about yeah. I'm sure I'm gonna remember something that I wanted to add real quick. These um, yeah, these capacitors are good. Like this thing did a good job. It almost I'm sure I could handle the the endurance test if I could just it just stop blowing up and eating MOSFETs like crazy. Uh, and I just I don't want to keep feeding it MOSFETs, and I, I just want to get something that works. Um, that's the other thing is that there's another major disadvantage to this style of MOSFET. Yeah, they're huge. They look like they can do some major power, but if you look at the data sheets, the same kind of MOSFET, uh, the power rating. Where are they there? So this is like my parts bins here. Where did I put them? I had some spare MOSFETs. Yeah, they are. So these guys can be the same ratings, even though they're way smaller. The, the, the T0, T0220, I think is the package type. But the maybe there's a current limitation. You can get less amps out of them. So that's a disadvantage. But the major advantage is the tab is metal. And so that means you can torque down the screw on that tab as tight as you want, and there won't be any problems. With these, you gotta be really careful. If you tighten these screws too much and you crack um, this MOSFET, and like that's the other thing is that can kind of see a little bit here those pins aren't perfectly straight they're under strain because some alignment issues between the heatsink and um, uh, the MOSFETs and this could have what uh, could have been what caused the failure that happened today is that they cracked and I could I didn't know that they cracked just with temperature change it is getting colder outside um, and uh, it's I wanted to wrap this project up before the winter time anyways um, but yeah, maybe maybe that's what what caused it. But the point <clears throat> the point is, if you're going to be building something or re refurbishing something, maybe consider using these. Um, the Singineer, I think it's called um, inverter. I saw uh, another YouTube video of somebody who was replacing the boards inside that, and that thing is rated for much bigger, much more power than this can do. Uh, and they use these kind of uh, the package of MOSFETs on the inside of it. I, I wasn't sure what that is, but now I'm pretty sure it's because. They can uh, torque these things down and they don't have to worry about them. And they're cheaper too, I think. Um, so maybe if I can't sell my stuff, if nobody's interested in this and nobody's buying that uh, in a transformer for me, I'll give it six months. And if I'm still stuck with that stuff, I'll, I'll rebuild this. Maybe using these or something, I'll just jam them in the pins and, and see how that goes. Um, and I also i am considering just getting that Singineer inverter. Um, people are always wary about Chinese inverters, um, but that one I think uh, it's worth testing. I'll get that on video and, and I'll hook it up to the house and I'll power the house with it. Uh, and I think that'll be pretty phenomenal. Like this project is still viable. I have these batteries. I got to use them. So um, I'm not going to let that go to waste because that's the main thing about this whole thing. It's essentially free energy. It's a free energy device that people still go on about in like... Um, conspiracy theories and all this nonsense. Look guys, we have free energy now. It's it's free energy, but you have, it, there's some cost in setting it up, just like any other th device. Any material object is gonna have some cost to get, get it. Uh, now, of course we wanna lower that cost as much as possible. We want everyone to access this. And I believe that this cost will come down. The more 
electric vehicles are on the road, that means the more electric vehicles are going to be getting in accidents and getting wrecked and going to the scrapyard, which means more batteries for guys like us. Uh, and same thing, like decentralized power distribution. It's kind of an oxymoron, but the same, in developing countries, they've skipped the whole infrastructure for us, um, for phones. For the telephone infrastructure, there's no telephone lines in Africa and India. Everyone uses a mobile phone or a cell phone. Uh, and a lot of places that don't have electricity, they will probably just skip the entire electrical grid altogether. Uh, they'll go for something with solar panels and local uh, a microgrid kind of thing. And that's, that's what this project is. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make a microgrid as cheap as possible, but, you know, uh, it's part of the learning experience, too. Okay, that's gonna, I'm going to wrap it up. Stay tuned. I'm not done making videos. My next video, I'm gonna find out what's inside these guys. Um, this uh, contactor, uh, during one of my many uh, incidences with these things uh, blowing up, this thing welded shut, uh, meaning that it's supposed to open. When you de-energize de it, it opens and breaks the circuit. Uh, it's kind of like um, uh, an automatic switch. And they're not, it's not supposed to weld shut. I'm well below the rated voltage rating. It can do 500 amps. Um, and it's not welded now because I just give it a give it a, a tap and the contacts opened up again So it still functions. It's good for testing uh, But you know if I'm ever gonna hook this up to a house I have to have something that I trust so I'm not gonna use this damaged unit But what I'm gonna do for fun I'm gonna cut it open and, and do it on video and see what it looks like. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Play safe